cheap and deep mistakes to avoid. All right, happy early spring. So six years ago, I put a deep spot in this pool right here, which is deep enough for you to jump or dive in off of right off of this deck. Um, it's been pretty successful, a lot of fun, but uh, I wish that I knew a bunch of things before I made this. And I searched high and low for information on it, but I couldn't find any. So um, I'm gonna share with you as many of those things as possible, whether or not I think you can go deeper, um, things about some of the products that these uh, pools come with, um, just everything that I can think of. And then you can make your own decisions as you're going forward with the possibility of doing some project like this. It is a big project, so try not to underestimate it, um, but it has been worth it for me. So anyways, I hope this is informational for you and that you can get a lot out of it. And uh, that's it, no, no product endorsements. I'm not getting paid. Um, it's just because I think it's cool. So let's get into it. Glue, what I know about glue, what I wish I knew about glue. This is the stuff that I used to make the pool. It worked until last summer and it started to leak. I made a whole video about how, to, how I fixed it because uh, it was in the middle of the summer. There's people coming over, birthday parties and all kinds of stuff. I would not use this again. Nothing against this company. It's just not the right product. And actually, I don't think that the pools are made out of vinyl. I think they're made out of PVC. Um, didn't know that when I made it. So things you learn. Now, I did a bunch of tests on different glues. This is a glue that came out of a caulking gun. Um, I was thinking that maybe if I were to use some kind of pasty putty style glue, um, but look, that just peeled right off of there. So um, I was testing the different types of, of material that I was working with and um, wouldn't use that. Glue that you would use for PVC pipe. So this yellow one is designed for all weather. And when I was doing these tests, I was trying to figure out a way to fix the pool. And I was thinking, well, maybe I can use the all weather because there's going to be some water in there. Um, this is not super convincing, but you are seeing some material transfer. So the glue right here is actually stronger than the material that it's gluing. And that's always a good sign, right? Um, this is the ABS to the PVC right here. This one is pretty tough too, but well, it got a little bit of material transfer right there, but um, no, nah, I wouldn't use that one. All right, so let's take a look at the heavy duty tile to tile. This one, eh, pretty good. Some material transfer. Um, so this is this is looking pretty good. And then this one is the back side, and there is a little bit of material transfer, and um, not too bad either. So here is. The um, regular PVC glue with the purple primer that um, you can get and quite a bit of material transfer here. Oh yeah. That's, that's just tearing apart the, um, the pool material. It's like, it's just like shredded it. That's tough. Yeah, that's not bad right there. And this one is face to face. Ooh! Before I do this again, I am going to test the regular glue without the purple primer. I don't have that test here to show you, but I'm gonna test that and um, see if I can get away without the purple primer because the purple primer is another step. And um, when you're doing this type of thing, Time is uh, kind of of the essence. You gotta get it glued together, put together, and filled with water before um, the winds come up. If you live in an area that gets gusty, um, because it will um, possibly catch your whole pool and it'll destroy the whole thing. Um, so if I can get rid of that step of the purple primer, um, I'll be happy and that's what I'm gonna test. 
Um, I would encourage you to do your own tests. I'm just sharing with you what I know. Okay, salt versus no salt. You know, um, when I got this pool, they're promoting to use salt water to keep the water sterile and clean. And it actually is really nice. It works really well. This is all just rust um, that uh, is due to the, primarily the salt, as far as I can tell. So um, I threw this, this is a piece of electrical conduit in there. Now the new Intex pools, they say that they're galvanized and galvanization will radically decrease this corrosion because that galvanization is a sacrificial layer of zinc on the steel. Now I don't know um, if they advertise this as being galvanized or not, but it's painted. It might be powder coated. So. I actually remembered that the original box is up in this loft and there's a um, cardboard kind of maze fort thing that um, that me and my daughter made a long time ago and the original box is up there and I'm going to check about the, um, the galvanization and also see what it says about salt water. Let's check it out. There's all kinds of stuff up here because we haven't played up here for quite a while. It goes all the way around the back side of that piano. And down in here, there's different little rooms and chambers. There's some artwork. And right there is the original box to the pool. So here it says, precision engineered, designed with top quality materials you can trust. Nothing on galvanization. It says right here, uh, clear sand filter pump and salt water system. See? Behind this piece of tape. Salt water system. Came with it right with the um, this unit that it came with. But it wasn't galvanized, which is good news because if the new ones truly are galvanized, that will be a huge plus for the um, saltwater system. One of the things with a pool that you add a deep spot to is that you can't take it down every season like the um, instructions say. Uh, you put it up and you leave it up because you don't want to be trying to like fit it back in the hole. You get wrinkles all over the place. If I were doing this again, first off, I make sure that the thing is galvanized, that there's a layer of zinc over the steel. Um, there can be powder coating over that as well, but I need to know whether, whether or not there's zinc in there. And then the other thing with, with that is, is that I'd probably add um, some type of lubricant, a zinc impregnated grease to these corners. Now the rest of the frame does have a little rust on it here and there. You'll see I've got some rust in certain areas. These areas right here, there's little evidence of rust. This corner, it's in there and uh, there's lots, lots and lots of rust. Um, this part's still strong, probably strong enough for me to get another season out of. This thing is old. It's over six years old. I don't know. Salt versus no salt. You're going to have to figure it out yourself. Um, but uh, I wouldn't do it this way again because I don't like the way that this looks. So when I put this pool up, this deck was already existing and I needed to match the pool to the deck. And I had no way of knowing where to actually put these pieces in because remember, it's all flat and you don't really know where it's gonna end up. So um, I guessed and I guessed wrong. So this wall actually comes up and it hits the deck, puts quite a bit of pressure on the deck and then it bends over this way a little bit. And uh, I wish that I knew what the uh, plumb line would have been. So right now I can tell you that line is about here, okay? And I know that it needs to go that way about two inches because that's how far the deflection is of this wall off of the, off of the edge of the deck. 
So my best guess is that if you measure 12 inches over from the top of your deck, plumb line down, that's where your, where your support should be. All right, the deep spot. First, I'm gonna talk about the location of the deep spot and why it's not a deep end. It actually doesn't matter. So if you think about our situation, I had this L-shaped deck and I put the pool obviously in the corner of that L-shaped deck. So I decided to put my deep spot right in this area. And the reason being is I wanted my ladder over here someplace um, and I wanted a, a shallower area on this side um, and then be also be able to jump and dive off of the deck. You can put it anywhere you want and here's your, your deep spot brackets. This is ground level, okay? And this is where you're going down further. You need an area right in here. This area needs to be about two feet. Um, I wouldn't go any less than two feet on these sides. Try to like take your wall and come straight down off of it. Um, I would be concerned about this area where you're where you're working i think it'll make it a lot harder to construct your pool um, i think that um, it might be kind of cool when it's done but these walls <clears throat> remember come in and out a lot when the water levels at different heights so i would be very concerned about this area sloughing off or falling down um, if you do decide to Go closer to your wall. Um, I'd love to hear about how it works out. So a lot of people ask me, can I go deeper or can you go deeper? So some of the things that I know about going deeper with a pool like this is that you have uh, your steepness of your walls, right? So again, you know, it's going to be up to you, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this without a little area right here. Um, so that gives you a limited amount of space between your walls for the, for the short side of the pool, right? And uh, you can go bigger because you can put boards in there like so and all kinds of different things like that. But uh, when you get to whether or not you can go deeper, these are a few things that I, I would be concerned about is the steepness of your walls, okay? So what you have is you have dirt down here, right? This is all just dirt. Here's my ground level. And if you start going deeper, um, you're gonna need to make these walls steeper in order to get down deeper, okay? And you have dirt, you know, you probably don't wanna go over, probably looking at about 45 degrees. Is there ways to do it? Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Um, I don't think I'm going to go any deeper with mine right now. What we're looking at with my, my pool. So when the water is in here, uh, down in here, it is about six foot six inches or so. If you do end up doing this and you go deeper, I'd love to hear about it. Let me know. So I was just mentioning how you're working in dirt. And one thing that I did do, which I didn't share in my other video, is that line this uh, edge with mason sand. And I smoothed it down um, all in here, which um, helped make this so it wasn't super bumpy, um, which I would do again. So I got a few things on preparing the area for a pool like this, and even a little bit for preparing the area for just a regular Intex pool without going down and making a deep spot. So we're actually gonna go back outside for this, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm standing on what was the original grade of the hill, so I need to build up a retaining wall. I'm really glad that I gave myself a little extra distance right here. If I could go back in time, I might even bring this up a little bit higher in order to get this flat. Um, but one of the things that happened when I just built this up, I was bringing in um, dirt and rocks and stuff like that to, to uh, fill this whole, whole area in here, and it didn't get compressed enough. 
So it's really important to make sure that your area is flat as possible. I did mine with a bubble level. Wouldn't recommend that. I'd get a transit. Now let me show you what happened with the settling of my dirt right here. So this whole side compressed down in. And I have some shingles under here that are acting like shims. And that is raising up the height of the pool so it's flat on this side. Now right over here, I had another problem. This pipe wasn't disconnected and the water level was low and the wind was moving this thing back and forth and it ripped a hole. And once that hole got started, it just ripped the whole side down. And that washed out this whole area. So I have a bunch of things under there to prop that back up. I would try to avoid, um, obviously, a hole getting ripped in the side of your pool, but also um, anything that might get washed away. That's why you don't want to use sand. So one more thing about preparing your area. I used uh, old moving blankets to actually line the hole, and I'm happy that I did that. But one thing that I did do that I wish that I didn't do is use this ground covering that actually came with the pool. It is silver, which is kind of nice um, because it might um, kind of keep reflect some of the heat back into the pool, but it just has no strength, um, and it's just a big mess. You can see it all over the place. Um, I wouldn't um, use that anywhere that it might come out from the edge of the pool. You can fold it up, tuck it inside, um, that's fine. But anything that's coming out where the sunlight will get onto it or whatever, it's going to fall apart. So I'm really hoping that this was a helpful video. You know, it's getting pretty hot around here and having a pool is a really nice thing. We've enjoyed this. We've enjoyed that deep spot and I would definitely do it again, and I might have to do it again um, here soon. So that's my problem. Hopefully some of this information will help you with uh, avoiding some of your problems. If you have other questions, please let me know. Let's check out some of my other videos. If you don't mind, give me a little thumbs up. Take care out there. Hi, hon. Hi. What you doing? Another stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> You remember when I did the floor and I said, boy, I never <laughs> do that again? <laughs> oh, but it looks like it's got so much potential. Yeah. <laughs>